What's up guys, welcome back to Daniel Talks Football right here on YouTube. I'm Daniel and we are back with another video. In this video, we're going to be doing deadline day as it happened. Yesterday was transfer deadline day and God was it not a busy deadline day. I've got loads of transfers that have and haven't happened in front of me. I've probably missed an absolute ton. It was such a busy deadline day. Every club was going at it. There's still some deals that aren't even officially announced, like Enzo Fernandez isn't actually fully announced as of recording. I'm sure it will be by 6 o'clock tonight. But it was a mad deadline day, and it started with Bayern Munich announcing a loan deal for Cancelo. This was the first big deal of the day. I did want to come in on this on the banks. There's a couple of things I've missed. But it started with Cancelo, Cancelo moving to Bayern, and this is a mad one, really. I mean, you look at the deal here. This is a guy that was one of the best fullbacks in the world, not six months ago, and now he's been benched by City. He's fallen out with Pep Guardiola, and he's moved to Bayern Munich on a deadline day loan. This has weakened Man City a lot, regardless of what people say. He's gone to Bayern Munich on a loan deal with a 70 million buy option. That's euros. I think it's 62.5 million pounds. Absolutely mad deal. And it started off a mad day because <sighs> I look at it and it's mad. What happened next? It was the Hertha Berlin situation with Isco. Isco was seemingly all set for a move to German side Hertha Berlin before a statement was released by the German side saying a deal for Isco was off after he failed a medical. Again, absolutely mad one this. Um, and it's a shame that this one couldn't have got over the line. This means Isco is now still a free agent. But if he's failing medicals, then he's going to definitely struggle to get a club. Conor Gallagher, there was approaches for Conor Gallagher by a lot of Premier League clubs according to the BBC. Uh, either on loan or obviously there was that permanent bid from Everton obviously Chelsea then did decide to keep him because of what happened with Jorginho later on in the day but there was a lot of interest in Conor Gallagher the next big move that happened was Sasa Lukic moving to Fulham um, he moved to Fulham on a four and a half year deal for something I believe to be around eight to nine million pounds I think Lukic was out of contract at the end of the season so Fulham have just brought this forward from a move that I presume they would have been looking to do in the summer Decent little, decent little signing this day to sort of strengthen that squad. There was more action to come in London after that, with Arsenal finally announcing their deadline day shock transfer of Jorginho from Chelsea for £12 million. Pounds. I'm sure you've all seen Cucurella's reaction to this, where we just started laughing. So I don't know if if Jorginho is that liked within Chelsea or what's happened there. Um, but Cucurella seemingly wasn't too sure of what was going on. That was certainly an interesting one, though, with uh, yeah, with Jorginho swapping the blue of Chelsea for the red of Arsenal. Bournemouth then completed their first deadline day deal with Zarbani joining from Dinamo Kiev before announcing Hamad Traore from Sassuolo. Two big loan deals there for initial loan deals anyway. I think they're both really the options or obligations to buy. But yeah, big, big transfers from Bournemouth, a club that obviously could be going down. So if they would go down, they wouldn't look to activate them options. I don't know if the options are obligations, I'm going to be honest. But if they do stay up, there's two excellent players from there to be able to build on. They are two really, really good signings. It was back to London then as uh, Crystal Palace announced Achamada from Stuttgart. He signed a, was it three-year deal, two and a half, three-year deal? A midfielder, I think, he is to just help, you know, strengthen up that midfield. They've obviously got Will Hughes in there at the moment, and that's not acceptable. We know what Patrick Vieira wants at that club, and to have Will Hughes in there just isn't acceptable. If you know what I'm talking about, you know. Um, but, but Will Hughes is an excellent player. I'm not saying he isn't, but uh, if you, you might understand. But no, Ahmada was the first signing to Crystal Palace before we moved to uh, the East Midlands. I was going to say West Midlands then. East Midlands when Nottingham Forest signed another Brazilian this window with Felipe signing from Atletico Madrid. This was then met with the news for Atleti fans that they couldn't go and follow through on their deal to sign Caglos Soyuncu from Leicester due to FFP regulations. That is a deal that's going to be happening in the summer. This wasn't the final centre-back transfer that's going to be happening in the summer that didn't quite happen in January, with Milan Skriniar staying at Inter Milan until the end of the season after his move to PSG fell through pretty much in January. That is a transfer that's going to be happening in the summer, so you will see Milan Skriniar represent 
Paris Saint-Germain from next season onwards. From there, we had Doherty moving to Atletico Madrid, completing a free transfer from Spurs before, well, you had the right-back roulette, really, didn't you? Obviously, Bellerin left Barcelona for Portugal and Sporting Lisbon before Spurs got their man and signed... What's his name? I forgot his name now. Pedro Porro from, uh, from Sporting Lisbon for £45 million. Just before that deal went through, Samuel Conga left Arsenal on a loan to join Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. And then we were, the deadline was closed pretty much, but obviously there were still more transfers to be announced. Nottingham Forest signed another two players with Shelby and Keylor Navas arriving from Newcastle and PSG before the transfer, the transfer news move across the East Midlands when Leicester were announcing new centre-back Harry Souter on a deal until 2028. Southampton completed two more deals after the deadline was shut around midnight with Suleimana and Onoachu both signing for the club. That's two excellent attacking signings there from the Saints to obviously join up with Miroslav Orsic, who was also signed. That's three really good attackers that uh, that the Saints could use to help them stay in the Premier League. Then a move fell through for Ziyech on a loan to PSG after Chelsea didn't hand in paperwork in time. I've heard that before as a Leicester fan. Although apparently the wrong paperwork was handed in like three times or something. So I don't know if that was Todd Bowley um, messing things up for Ziyech. I've heard he may have done. But uh, that's just that's just alleged, so don't crucify me if it's incorrect. Then last but not least, Sabitzer swapped the red of Bayern Munich for the red of Manchester before Enzo Fernandez was announced as a new Chelsea player in deadline day's biggest ever deal. That wasn't actually done on deadline day. That was done on today, Wednesday, because... Well, it's still not really. It's not really officially announced as of this. There's been a fee agreed announced between the clubs. He's going to be a Chelsea player. Don't worry about it. He will be a Chelsea player. Um, and that's the one I want to discuss, really. Enzo Fernandez has gone to Chelsea for £105 million. This is a player that had an excellent World Cup and now has, yeah, after a deal that's been messed around by Chelsea for so long. I didn't think it was going to get done on deadline day. I thought it would possibly be done in the summer. But I just thought Chelsea would mess mess them around again. I don't know why Chelsea weren't just happy to pay that early on in the window because they rejected that fee early on in the window. Now they have just gone and paid it. God knows what happens. But Enzo Fernandez will be playing for Chelsea for the rest of this season. What a crazy deadline day. And the question I have for you guys is, what did you make of it? Did you enjoy deadline day? I mean, it's absolute crazy. I was thinking about just going mad on content for deadline day, but I thought there'd be too much I'd have to get done, so I didn't. I thought I'd hold back and wait until today to get the content out for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video anyway. Who was your club's biggest deadline day signing? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you all again in the next video. See ya!